here in Clare, your independence from here in Stancock, here in Phoenix, Arizona. Hello from the studio of Freedoms and S, Freedoms Phoenix. Uh, dot com. Oh, see? Huh? Huh? Are we going to have karaoke at the Jackalope Freedom Festival? I think we should have karaoke. Let's have karaoke. You know, the, the, what we're gonna. These are some pictures we're just gonna let scroll of uh, the last uh, uh, Jackalope Freedom Festival, uh, J- 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 Jack Fest. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, just talk about you know what you know has happened in the past and what's going on this time. We want to make sure that we have uh, enough information that people know what they don't have to do. <laughs> just just freaking go. No, oh, it, it's beautiful up there. It's a great spot, and the man's going to do something. They're going to do something. They're going to, like, you know, say we're not allowed. Oh, 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 the jackalope. I am Spartacus. You know, i tell you where the I am Spartacus thing came from. It was um, because, uh, well, who's in charge? Well, I'm in charge. No, I'm in charge. No, I'm in charge. And then, of course, we go up there, and everybody wears shirts, uh, special agent, not in charge. <laughs> so this is, it's going to be interesting how this, um, you know, comes out. What I want to do is uh, I want to make sure that we have uh, an opportunity to understand how we're going to approach it this time, how we're going to market it, how we're going to push it, what's going to be available, and uh, which one of you guys want to go first, Leon or Alma? They keep pointing at each other. All right, let's go ahead and... All right, Leo, man, tell me what's up. You know, how, how's it coming together? Oh, everything's going good. Um, I don't know. Next, Alma, <laughs> tell me how things coming together. <laughs> Leo is going to be roasting a pig with Brian. Really? Okay. All right, let's go back to Leo. Um, um, you ever done that before? Um, I did when I was little. I have a Filipino family, and they did a roasted, yeah, get closer. roasted pig, uh, and they call it lechong. So you you know you put it on a spit and you put it over the fire and roast it slowly. Oh, so that you just you know yeah, I seen it on TV. Well, <laughs> I, I did it when I was younger a bunch. Um, so it's really not that hard. <sighs> okay, so <laughs> we all learn. And it, you know one of the things that was oh yeah 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 yeah. Okay, now this is the sign that she had before. <clears throat> Corn dogs, corn dogs. You know, it, go get your corn dog, but you had to sit there and wait for five hours for the thing to cook. I mean, what what kind of device do you have this time? That's a new sign. That's this year's sign. I just finished making that last night. But, no, but you had corn dogs. Okay, so, well, last year we did a deep fried turkey and a deep fried chicken. But the first year I did corn dogs and I didn't have the big deep fryer. But now I have the big deep fryer. So I created a um, great graded device to go on the top of it and i have these clips that hold on to the sticks that go inside the hot dogs and um the grates are far enough apart i'm able to slip them in individually somebody can help me whatever someone will be hired this year and uh i'm going to be making corn dogs from uh, like noon to three okay well i got a bunch of questions right off the bat okay this person you hired, what kind of uh, employment forms are you <laughs> filling out? How old are they going to be? What's the minimum requirement of they get allowed and you have deep fried in the forest of uh, there's a food selling permit kind of what? Our contract's private. It's nobody's business. I, I'm just wondering. <laughs> you know, we're out and you, you're like making corn dogs and oil and kind of out and, you know, where's your bio waste going to go? Uh, how long are you going to be, you know, what's your fire suppression? They're fired whatever? right before they get hurt. Where did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, you, all right. You know, I'm just, I just, you know, I not that I care about such things. That's in the contract. They'll, they'll know that ahead There's of time. Con- is this a government enforced contract? No, or? this is a private contract. Oh. Uh, Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> so, so while they're getting hurt, you know, they're fired before it actually burns them. Right. You know who's coming this year? Nicola and Ethan, they're going to make it. Yep, you know Nicola and Ethan? They're like yeah. traveling agorists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were there the first year. They did, they missed last year, but she helped me make corn dogs the first year. So I'm hoping that she'll be around if she wants some work. You know, the thing is, is that, you know, th- th- let me tell you what happens. Everybody goes up there to, you know, make some money, going to do it, and they're kind of, you know, and yeah, but that's like work. You know, I go, hey, it's breakfast. Where's my coffee? But that's like work. Or was I thought you were going to have this come at freaking 9 o'clock. You know, that's like work, you know. So I tell you, you go up, you better be hiring some employee, get some work done. You know, get it, gimme, 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 or I'll just do it myself, you know, which is agorism. You know, it's just the free market will provide or it won't. 
you know so you gotta be you know ready to do it yourself that's one thing that you're you made a list of camping stuff it's kind of like uh, be prepared to bring an extra for everybody that doesn't have sure why not yeah i mean you know, a lot of times people just show up and go hey i'm here you know i got some bitcoin what am i buying <laughs> <laughs> if you need if you need a service, let's all go out to the meadow. No, you know, there'll be hot spots there too that definitely help and a lot of people have access to those, so I'll probably be tethering on myself. Tethering on the what? Hot spots or what? A hot spot on somebody's phone because I have, you know, my iPad with Wi Fi. You know, the signal's not that great up there. Mm, it's spotty it's spotty i mean you know it's one of those i I did the you know the rabbit on top of the rv kind of standing there (laughs) doing the egyptian thing to get a signal so i could upload a a magazine article you know both years because always it's the first you know weekend in the month which was always when our magazine was due so donna's like you know finishing magazine and i'm transmitting sorry donna last minute kind of whatever you know well now uh we're not on a hard deadline we're doing the newspaper we're getting ready for the newspaper and i and uh you know it's just today i transmit a bunch of stuff it's a lot of things going on with the newspaper are you going to hand out the newspaper at jackalope you know i don't think it's going to be ready by then i'm not going to force it there's so much i, I got to pull the trigger at some point because there's so much going on now that I mean, would be cool if you I mean, release your first edition of the newspaper at jackalope eh, probably not and the reason is is because they just started regulating uh, Bitcoin, not in New York State, doing that. They, we have uh, Israel going freaking stupid, you know, and all that crap that's going on. We have the dollars about ready to go. We have uh, um, international, we're going to have third world war. It's Jack, you know, a Lope Freedom Festival 3 along with World War, war 3. And we just kind of <laughs> might as well stay up there. You know, that was one thing. <laughs> that's why you should bring extra. <laughs> Right. You, know, <laughs> you might get stuck up there. <laughs> well, I mean, keep in mind, remember the guys that were up there, they're in their little razor going around wanting to, you know, have us explain it to them, the older guys in their little coming around and visiting and buying and what's up. And, you know, these were all retired military intelligence guys. That's why the, so much attention by the man is on you guys up there is because there is a bunch of retirees that moved up there for this very reason. And damn To it, be left alone? Yeah, to be left no alone. No way. And here comes those damn anarchist libertarians up here. Who wants to be here. left alone? Oh, you're not allowed to be left alone. You know, <laughs> it was for us. So this was... It, it, I, I'm really seeing that uh, this is going to grow if you leave it alone. So how much you know, regulation? Do you have like a downtown? Do you have like, you know, this is the quiet zone, this is the noisy zone, this is the kid zone? There's only one zone, and it's an uppity slave zone. <laughs> uppity slave zone. Okay, now what's the uppity slave zone? What does that mean? <laughs> everyone, everyone keeps asking about like uh, where the spots are. Where, where do we camp and register? So I'm going to put things like this up. You know, uppity slave zone, uh, <laughs> under the radar zone. You know that kind of stuff. It, it just gives people the idea that you know, well, we are all enslaved in some way, shape, or form. But we're going to be the uppity slaves. You know, the ones that fight back against slavery. I don't want to fight. Well, and if the, hug back, love back against slavery, I, I guess. I just want to be, I just, you know, I'm, I'm going to sit down. Oh. You know, this is, um, I'm, I'm going to show you the slide that when the guys came up, I'll just whip through here until I find it. When the guys came up to, uh, you know, they wanted to visit with us, you know, and say hello and everything. Oh, oh there it is. Boom. Free hugs. And it had a copblock.org um, logo or sticker up there along with a camera okay and that camera you know was just there going you know this is this is um, we need to we need to just you know let you know that you're being videotaped and they didn't know it until they walked up and they came up and they go hey are you 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 look in charge you're like you're in charge they go, and they started being all uppity with their m16s and stuff literally you know in the forest in the middle of nothing they want to explain it to you and then they look kind of go uh uh what did I just say? 
<laughs> I'm on camera. I'm on camera. Okay, so tell us about that experience when they came up there, Alma. Well, I'm sure they were like, oh my God, there's a camera videotaping us in the middle of the forest. <laughs> like what forest service rangers really going to expect that? I mean, I guess usually they're probably more used to dealing with rainbow gatherers who are, I don't know how often rainbow gatherers support, you know, carrying weapons or guns or things like that but there was a bunch around there well yeah they're they, walking and going and there's one and there's one and there's one and there's, you know, i don't think this is going to go well for you you know i mean everyone def- everyone supports defending themselves i mean and not, i shouldn't say everyone i guess some people could be pacifists or something like that but i don't i don't speak for Hell, everyone I'm but a pacifist. <laughs> I, just, I'm, I passively don't care okay yeah that, that was the thing um, i used to do some rainbow gatherings when i was younger and uh, the, the cops come in, they're all in their gear all the time, they arrest people like crazy, but most hippies, they're really into the peace and trying to work with the state or go under the radar, but I think that they noticed there were a lot of guns, and it's like their job's really not worth that. You know, we would have in the morning, helicopters, I forgot about that. I didn't see any helicopters. <laughs> oh, heck, they had... Yeah, know, there were a few people F-16s. that flew over. But uh, they, yeah, yeah, I know, I was up on the hill. You know, you know, I might not have been paying attention. Yeah, no, I was. Where the drones can see you perfectly. Oh no, they wired. They wired the trees, man. You know, (laughs) the trees are wired. Yeah, don't. I mean, don't laugh. If it wasn't, our phones are. You know, that's one thing when you go to (laughs) Pork Fest now. You got 4G Verizon. They're going. Oh oh, man, we got to get and land up there by Pork Fest. You know, by Rogers Campground, we got to get us some 4G. And I'm like, seriously, you know? Yep. There's a lot of people here. We need to make sure. We need to have 4G. That's what we need. <laughs> well, whoever had my job before I quit, or whoever has my job that I had before I quit, good good, good for them. Well, that's what you did. You did the uh, towers, towers for South kind of Verizon. Verizon. Yeah, it was you. Ew. It was me. It was you. Okay. Uh-huh. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, we right. we had some um, people <laughs> contacting us about asking about rules about where do you camp and does the park close and, <laughs> and I, I think there are people from the east coast that don't have national forests like out west where it's like 90 percent uninhabited states and they actually think there's like campgrounds you know there's a spot and a fire pit and you know the nearest store is a mile away and you know arizona when you're out of the city and bathrooms yeah. and showers <laughs> there's one the city, campground <laughs> There's one campground that's a uh, statist owned, and you want to pass that one. If you see that, keep going. You're not at Jackalope yet. Yeah, no, this is, um, yeah, you need to prep. I mean, it's only a few days, so you just, you know, enough water and whatever. It's an ice chest kind of thing. But I, I tell you what was popular. It was the Hope System, you know. Now, I hope you'll see maybe some of this, these pictures you'll see because, you know, you bring your big generator, and it's like, you know, nobody wants to deal with that. You know, they have the new Whisper Quiet um, Hondas that are really quiet, but you know they're expensive, like eight hundred bucks or something. So if we got, I looked into them, I'm like, dang it, man! I because oh, I got some good generators, but it's just they're so loud. And then uh, then you got the RV generators and everything. There's enough power, but the Hope system is solar. You know, so everybody's charging all their phones and everything up there and so on. So I think I'm going to go ahead and. Um, uh, oh man, am I gonna have to do this here? Probably bring the dome, you know. And I asked Donna if you're bringing the dome, and she said yes. No, oh. <laughs> well, I guess I am. So we'll bring the dome, and we'll go ahead and do uh, make it a shower, you know. Oh, that'd be amazing. Because we got the hope system, we can not only do we have those blue barrels, you know, the big white barrels and everything. We bring enough water. You know, we go up there and we just, once we get them up there, they're light. And then we just go down, you know, to the lake, fill them, or get, you know, water and tamp, something. And we bring them up on the trailer and we go ahead and have the water there. But with the Hope system, you can recycle it. It filters it, you know, so I can have, you know, fresh water or fresh water. And I go, and one costs uh, uh, more than the other. <laughs> you know? So it's like showers out on the Lone Prairie back in the day in the Wild West. You know, Is it going to be like a Roman bath shower? Hell yeah! You know what? Because I, I go. You know what? It goes on for ten minutes at the top of the hour, and however many people can fit in there. 
<laughs> I mean, I you know, get it. over it. You know, I'm That's not trying awesome. to babysit this thing. You know, it's like in the morning, it's like, you know, it's on for 15 minutes, it's off for 15 or something like that. You know, you just go in there, however many people do it. Well, I just want to go buy my phone. Well, you can wait till 1030 because, you know, everybody else is doing it, you know. So anyway, we'll work out something. But uh, uh, showers would be nice. I mean, you got these little portable individual things. You got heated showers that, we, you know, some people got the solar heat. I know you had a shower thing, you know, Brian set up for you. Yeah, and, but I just put up the curtain on it. I get a new curtain because this guy's son ripped mine last year. I think he's got a knife to it or whatever. <laughs> it was yeah. a stick. Oh, let me just take a stick to this random piece of plastic that's not mine. <laughs> not, not, not. Everybody gets their lessons learned. No, we are a village. We, we all, you know, beat the children equally. No, the thing... This, no. I just made him help Brian fix it. Yeah, no, it's it's all he good. Ta- he, taped the, he taped it. I think Brian took a shower, though, before we oh, noticed heck, Brian, it Brian is a 12-year-old. Are you kidding me? You know, he's more destructive than the other guys. I mean, I don't even want... Yeah, I don't turn about. That was good. That was good. He needed that. You know, so, so the thing is, is that Donna, uh, what she did is that we just heated water... And uh, we just get all in the, are all together out in the middle of the nothing, and I just pour slowly a warm pitcher of water over, and uh, you know she just took a shot. Done. All right, we're done. Next. Don't you know? tell too many people that they'll be lining up next year, pe- peeping around trees, and hanging out. Yeah. yeah <laughs> when's Donna? Yeah, yeah. When's Donna gonna take her shower? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With the spotlight on. She's going to buy the by the light of the moon up on the hilltop, <laughs> silhouetted. You know, you'd be like in the uh, city slickers. He goes, "Oh, did you talk to her?" As he saw my, did you ever in love? Oh yeah. There was that one time I came over a hill and and a girl, you know, that she the woman out of her cabinet. She's putting up the laundry on the lone prairie and and the sun behind her showing off the the form that God gave her. Oh yeah, did you talk to her? He goes, "No." Well, she could have been the love of your life. He goes, "She was." <laughs> Oh, see, 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 nice little sunset there. It got you know, me. This is, you know, this is it, it's really relaxing and purging, and it just, you know, clears the mind. A lot of good people and the kids. And they got to go find the jackalope. We got, you know, Alma goes and hides them out there, and we'll go out there, and all the kids, we kind of put a boundary, and then, there they go, man. Got to find that jackalope. We had them good last time. No. Wants to make their presence so we're we're here and and we just want you to know we're the man. Okay, we get how did, how, did, how would we ever miss it? That's a nice tactical vest and M16 you have there. <laughs> I mean, seriously. So you know, uh, whatever they you know whatever. Now they they wind up showing up later. You know, um, I mean, we show up later, or I did that year because uh, we got to do the show and everything. I usually don't leave until after Monday, but some of the guys are there Tuesday, Wednesday. You know, they'll show up and they'll say, hey, are you you here with the jackalope free? They go, what? I don't know what you're talking about. There's a jackalope what? With jack- There's really jackalopes in Arizona? I didn't know there were jackalopes in Arizona. You know? So this is, and what is a jackalope anyway? Explain that to me. A ja- jackalope is a mythical creature like freedom in today's society. Oh, wait a minute. Now you're freaking going to tell me there's no Santa Claus. Okay? <laughs> there's no Santa Claus. No! <laughs> oh, Sorry. Oh, oh. The jackalope, you know, it's like going, when I was a kid, they called them snipe hunts, you know? Yep. Gotta go get that snipe. Go get jackalope. Well, what form does it take? I mean, you have the actual, we have, you know, like paper mache jackalopes that you've created before, and then we, you know, have paper ones. And so, I mean, the, the jackalope hunt, what's it going to be this time? So this year I made little styrofoam jackalopes and they're painted and they have whiskers and antlers and ears and they have different color ribbons on them um, for the age groups that the jackalope hunt will be for. So basically uh, like ages zero through six um, will be, I believe... Um, green and then 7 through 10 will be red and then 11 and up will be blue so the jackalope hunt will they can all happen at the same time but this time the older kids don't just find the jackalope and the younger kids are like oh I didn't even make it up no, the I already yet. know what's going to happen what's going to happen Leo older kids are going to tell their younger brother or sister look what, this is where it's at and, <laughs> and then uh, or they'll pick it up in the air and say oh look what I found 
Maybe and we should make them. Kids will see it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can make them sign a contract. If yeah, you see yeah. the color that's yeah. not your age group, zones. Yeah. don't move it. Yeah. I think maybe the Forest Service Rangers, though, maybe the reason they wear full battle rattle up there is because all the jackalopes. Yeah. Damn it. Haven't they seen Monty Python? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like. Jack- yeah, ferocious beast with his little teeth that come to go in with her throat, you know, the, the killer rabbit. Okay. I, you know, that'd be good. They, we should have a Monty Python rabbit, too. You know, I have a really nasty, you know, whatever. Nah, nah, a creepy be, rabbit. A creepy rabbit. Creepy jagalobe. You know, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I always do. Because I tell you the biggest reason is because there's nothing to prep. I mean, there may be for you, you want to do something, but, and then of course, if I do the dome shower thing, I'm not, I'm not guaranteeing I am, because I'm <laughs> like, you know, if I got the time and somebody will help and we make a thing of it or something, it would be nice, but I think people are going to start, you know, uh, taking care of their own little shower thing, but, um, That'll be interesting because I like demonstrating the hope system because to have water under pressure and to be able to reclaim the water and filter it, you know, for even drinking, you know, I'm sorry, you know, and we just plug this in the uh, way uh, there. Uh, well, let's just put it in the toilet seat of the outhouse and we'll just, you know, uh, uh, process that. If all hell broke loose. Or not. <laughs> I, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, we are you going to have uh, outhouses this time? Yes, we have already. Not we. Sorry. There's an individual. An individual. An individual who has voluntarily donated his time to um, secure six. We got six porta potties coming coming this year, and uh, you can donate to him. You know, they were always welcome. You know, the first year they showed up, the second year they showed up, and the the company that he worked with in the first year, he tried to do the second year, and the guy just wasn't responsive enough. And we can't, like, guess on this. He goes, fine, screw you. I'll go to this other guy. Hey, 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 I thought we had a... What do you thought? I thought you'd need to answer your phone. That's what I thought. Yeah, and you I'm know? not sure why he couldn't get a hold of him either, because the guy in Heber Overgard actually had a porta body already up there and left it for us without any payment last year. So he left it, he cleaned it, and then left it a little bit longer until our other ones came from Pine. I'm like, wow. But we, I was able to contact the same guy this year. So Which same guy, first or second guy? The first guy. All right, well, you know. I think his name is Matt, so say hi to Matt if you see him dropping Matt, off the porta bodies. <laughs> you know, and that, and that really is a night. I mean, it's out in the middle of the freaking nothing. Right. I mean, this is dry, dry, there's camping. I yeah. mean, you know, and Cut. you get a, a porta potty and went, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. here's another one. Um, I think it was. Didn't they have a larger handicap one or something there? I think was one. Anyway, one the of them pink was, ones. Yeah, there's one of them was pink. Okay, and the girls were like, "Hey, you know, you guys are all using that. You can't. You you're not allowed." Pink. I go seriously, seriously. <laughs> I got a rule up here. Seriously, and I'm going. You know, it's that. Well, is there a urinal in? I don't even remember if there was or not. I probably was. They, they you know. taped a bunch of signs saying women only and. And uh, men use the other ones. And, no. And it didn't work. No. <laughs> no. So anyway, it, it worked out fine. It was good to have those available. But, you know, people uh, had their own. I think what was, um, in, you know, of interest to a lot of the people up there that, you know, lived up there and the forest ranger and all that kind of stuff, they have nothing to bitch about. We left it in better condition than when we got there. It was clean. Donna and I always, we stay an extra day or so. A couple other guys do. We go around, you know, everybody polices their own stuff. And we go around the entire camping area where 100 whatever people there. It'd probably be more people this time. It keeps growing, like doubling every year. We don't do a census. There was a lot of kids. Okay. But anyway, so we go up there and we take, you know, those little, um, like, like a uh, grocery bag, a plastic grocery bag. And I bet we didn't fill it three quarters, you know, of the entire camp. We just, and we just picked up, you know, those old crap that was there for 14 campings ago, you know. And uh, so we get, and it's in night. They go, damn, that was that. Okay, well, that's good. Probably cleaning up after the voluntary sheriff's department that met like a month before right, us. Right. Well, see, that's what, well, the first, how we found this place is we went up around um, that area, and I've had another place, you know, kind of picked out near uh, a lake, you know, there's a lake by this one, too, but, I mean, you're not, like, on the lake, so it doesn't really matter, you know, but what happened was um, Alma and Brian had been camping uh, less than a mile from where this is, and she goes, well, I want to go see where I go, wow, this is pretty nice, well, let's just keep looking, this is not really big enough for what we need, and then we saw these people, can we go up there? 
and it was the volunteer posse sheriff horse whatever search and rescue excuse us go camping thing okay and we go wow do you guys do this uh, when do you guys up here how often do you do it? well we kind of rotate through the forest and, and this is kind of we're like you know what mr law enforcement man we're gonna camp here <laughs> yeah we will be here later you know so they, because uh, they know the area and they know what a nice place it is, they're like, damn it, man, these freaking anarchists are coming up here going to muck up our crap. Well, the history about Baca Meadows is a family used to live there and the they what got a, cemetery there. Yeah, whatever the housing that they lived in is no longer there, but um, it used to be her, I think the woman's son had um, carved that path that goes into Baca Meadows from that um, main from the main, I think it's Black it Canyon be, Road. Well, it used to be General Cook Trail, you know, from Conquistador. So people traveled Explorer across it times. all the time. And when they stopped there, she would house them and feed them, the the mother of Baca, the Baca family mother. Well, not if you don't properly open the jackalope <laughs> I'm pretty sure with she, a pledge. I'm pretty sure she didn't have any permits <laughs> or permission to what? cook food for these people is the whole point, you know. So, like, she was just there to help them out. And How did they do their sanitary stuff? Yeah. Well, I tell you, you know, and you're going to be, you know, processing quail or something and doing, and then you got quail your pig and roast and kind of, and, you know, and this is, you know, from experience people, and, and, and we all know that you got to be careful. You know, this is going to probably more careful than uh, the law would require. But, you know, we'll we'll take because we got ch- our children there and stuff. So, you know, I don't bring my grandkids up. I don't want to have problems. You know, so we got and and the shooting is way over. Oh, oh, who's in charge? I, I don't know who's, who's going to be the first guy to get there. To judge, uh, who's judge? Um, I'm Spartacus. No, I'm Spartacus. No, I'm Spartacus. You know, this is, I can hear, but what, you know, everybody's wanting to know, you know, where you go and register and stuff, right? So what do we have? You know, uh, uh, Leo's going to have the deregistration table, okay? Now, the thing is, is that explain the deregistration table concept, Leo. Uh, we're getting a bunch of contacts and emails on Facebook and Alma and I, and uh, the whole, uh, everyone's like, where do you uh, register for a spot and how much does it cost? And you still haven't got over that concept of uh, actually being free and out in the forest. Silly statists. So we're going to put those deregistration signs Registration up. forms are for slaves! We're going to put them up all over the camp and just confuse them. And then... Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna, so the arrows going yeah, around all in circles. They're, they're off way over the and hill. I want to videotape them all doing that. And then um, <laughs> we were going to put an actual table by a tree, and I'll put a sign saying, you know, pointing down towards it. And then we have a little uh, uh, form that we made. And um, it's like a camping permit registration thing. There you go. And um, see what's it got? Oh, you actually got a form. Yeah, we're, we haven't printed it out yet. Okay, well, let's go ahead and show this. All I right. emailed it to you, so if you wanted to pull it up on the computer screen, you could. But all right, all right, all right, um, all right, all right. yeah, well, the whole idea is it's it's like you know all your information. Are you camping? You know all the date. You know, like you would actually register. days of attendance, your full name, address, <laughs> contact, email. <laughs> You know, sex, birthday, <laughs> nationality. A little, a little. How funny. many firearms you got? List them. <laughs> vehicle. You know, number. Slave number. Your social security number. <laughs> uh, political affiliation. Especially if you supported Ron Paul. Are you under the uh, uh, illusion that you're a free individual? You know, in the waiver. And what does it say at the bottom? Well, um, it, it, we might have to alter it a little bit, but it says, you know, I, I certify that I am a slave and unwilling to act free. You know, it's in small print at the bottom here. <laughs> I hereby give permission to the man to arrange my life and tell him how and where to exist, including a FEMA camp if necessary. <sighs> and the participant is responsible for his, his or her own life because you're a free human being. By signing this ensures that you are a slave, at least in your own mind. And if you're free, act like it. And quit asking permission. So they'll fill this all out, and you know, just a little education. You know, there's the going to be time. people to fill this out. And Probably wanna, the cops. I actually want to. I'm going to put it like somewhere. <laughs> you ever find out who filled it out? You're going seriously. I, I if you're thinking, asking where to fill it out, you're a cop. <laughs> or who to turn it into? Well, <laughs> you guys weren't following all the arrows. <laughs> and um, you know, like how much do I pay for a spot and a vendor spot? And you know, we'll just, uh, I'll put another sign saying like five dollars. Give it to whoever's in charge. So if they're walking around, I'm in charge. I'm in charge. I'm in charge. They're walking around asking people who's in charge. 
No, I don't know who's in charge. You know, we got the I, my love my shirt. Special Agent mm-hmm. not in charge. Okay, they, they I got that when uh, we emceed uh, the Revolution March in Washington. I just you know I go look. I don't want to be in charge. I'll do whatever you want me to do and everything. But because you know what happens, it's like doing the summit or doing Jack Lope or anything. You know, everybody and their grandma coming up. To, you know, I'm on Leo. Hey, 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 where's the what's the you know, seriously? Well, well, the the, the uh, tables over there. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be the guy. I'm in charge. You just tell everybody to give me the money. You know, it's got to. We'll make it. And and it's fifty dollars as far as I'm concerned. You know, we'll see how many I get. Are you are you underemployed and hungry? Yes, I'm always underemployed and hungry. Because <laughs> this is it's the technically it's the biggest benefit for the underemployed and hungry. Jackalope Freedom Festival. Why well, they can go there and find a job and get food? Exactly. No permission from the man. All right, go go.